Baldwin is racing extremely hard in an attempt to get back in this race after losing over two minutes on his first tire change and at least a minute on the second. Spencer back into the pits for refueling. Freddy's got rear tire problems again. They're singling him off the bike to change it, and Spencer looks thoroughly disgusted. Eddie Lawson, number 21, now in first place, as Spencer angrily pushes the microphone away from his face and climbs back on his bike to continue what must be an extremely frustrating race for him. On lap 41, Crosby's back in first place, Spencer amazingly in second, and Pietri third. Mike Baldwin has fought his way back into sixth place. This young man will simply not take no for an answer. Eddie Lawson, formerly in first on the 500cc Formula One Kawasaki, is out of the race with a broken gearbox. left in the race, Schlachter number 48 is out with a mechanical failure. Another rider loses control of his bike and sends it flaming into the straw bales. Spencer comes into the pits one last time to top off his gas and finish off the race. No tire problems this time. Freddie is off and away and looking for race leader Graham Crosby. But Crosby is showing no signs of faltering, maintaining the same steady pace throughout the race. finish line first, it's Graham Crosby, followed by Freddie Spencer, who only lost by 11 seconds after spending several minutes in the pits changing tires. In third, it's Roberto Pietri, number 88. Another strong finish for the young Venezuelan, and Mike Baldwin in fourth. Once again, the Daytona Speedway has set the stage for the future of motorcycling. The factory teams continuously stretching the limits of their knowledge and the firm belief that innovation is the only way to build the winning motorcycle of tomorrow. And with that in mind, a lot of people left Daytona with the feeling that it was just a matter of time for the Honda rocket ships. And that time would be next time.